So all we're doing is extending that ridge out to the left and the right, if you like, to create gables where there were previously bridges. Fine. And that does not require planning permission. Just so that uh, I can make it as clear as I can for the members, as a whole, this whole development requires planning permission to be taken as a whole. Single individual elements, so the hip to gable, that can be done on its own under permitted development. So you can still get the same impact, uh, the same change of character to the uh, to the run flow. Uh, again, a single story extension of the rear on its own, that can be done under permitted development. Um, so again, the same impact, the same change in the character to the to the uh, to the run flow. The size of the dormer as it currently stands would need planning permissions regardless, planning permission regardless. Um, but a smaller dormer could be put on the back of the property, uh, and it wouldn't have to be considerably smaller, just brought in slightly on the side. Uh, and again, that could be done under permitted development. So you'd still get the impact of, of increased overlooking, as it were, uh, to the properties at the back. Uh, and all of those elements could be controlled in a way that was there permitted development. Uh, but the separation distances from the from the new door in here uh, to the nearest property at the rear is 26 meters, so it is in excess of the transport we normally seek to achieve. Thank you, Chair. Well, I was just trying to briefly establish what was the element, what were the elements of this development that required the planning permission it, per se, as opposed to the ones that didn't require planning permission because they could be done under permitted development rights. The petitioner, as you've just alluded to, did make some comment about the overlooking the rear to the four properties on the other road and I think you've just clarified that position that our normal guidelines which are ones that would be considered as appealing that we went to appeal is that there shall be a minimum of 21 meters and as you rightly said these are 26 meters so with no sustainable grounds for refusing development on those grounds that separation distance is inadequate. I just wanted that, those points clarified for the members of the committee. So what we're really looking at is the impact of that um, large dormer as being the element of the application which does, would, require approval if it was to be put in on its own and as a total development it needs to be considered in that context with that being the element that is significant. Just wanted those points clarifying the NGS just to make sure people understood exactly what we were trying to decide here. Anybody else want to make any comments? No. The, the office's recommendation
It is not considered this window would result in any overlooking to adjacent properties that would warrant a refusal of the planning permission, as adjoining garden areas are already overlooked by other two-story neighbouring properties. No habitable room windows to neighbouring properties would be overlooked as a result of these proposals. There is no predominant character or style of property that defines the street scene or wider area. There is a mix of house types, including bungalows, dormer bungalows, and two-story dwellings. Therefore, the change to the character of this property with the inclusion of a park first floor extension is not considered to impact on the character of the area or residential community. The proposals are recommended for approval, and there is a qualifying petition. Okay, if you can just see the from the bottom of the bottom of the I just bring it up those two places that you can hear you. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, can you give us your name? <coughs> and you have five minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Sophie Bevan, my dress is three with Lily Carty. My garden it backs onto the corner of six Sands Bridge. I'm speaking on behalf of the 47 people who signed the petition against this proposal and my immediate neighbours who objected. Um, it would be effective by this application to convert a bungalow into predominantly a two-storey dwelling. We review the planning department's decision to recommend consent for the following reasons. The proposal would permanently remove the bungalow from Colby's housing stock, direct, directly contravening na current national government guidelines to preserve or increase the number of bungalows in England. Already there are very few bungalows in Colty, only approximately 12 or 2% of Colty's dwellings. Due to their scarcity, they're highly sought after and sell quickly when they become available, unlike the four to five bedroom houses nearby, of which there are plenty. There are currently eight other bungalows near Six Simons Bridge. The council should be further concerned that granting consent in this case would create a precedent, making it more difficult to object to similar proposed conversions nearby. This could lead to the removal of the majority of bungalows from Colby, who bar people needing them from living in this area. Current planning policies state that decision making should widen the choice of homes for different groups in the community, such as the elderly and people with disabilities, not reduce the options available to them. It should also be noted that there are few, if any, opportunities to increase the provision of bungalows in the Colby West Kirby area. This area of the Wirral has greater than number, average number of elderly residents and the ability to move into suitably sized and laid out accommodation is crucial, enabling, enabling residents to live independently for longer. The planning officer's description of the housing in Simons Bridge and its surroundings does not reflect the existing well thought out layout of single and two story buildings. It is stated that the design of the proposal is no more intrusive than the other two story properties in the cul de sac. However, it is vital to understand the topography of the area. At the higher ground levels, closer to Barton Hay Drive, the houses are mainly two-storey. At the lower levels, towards the Wirral Way and D.S. Street, the buildings are mainly bungalows. <coughs> this arrangement allows the significant visual value of the natural open coastline to be preserved, as recommended in the Council's core strategy documents for this area. <coughs> the only two-storey buildings along this stretch of Wirral Way are five signs bridge, which could not be built as a bungalow due to service drain restrictions, and for the Finney, which is a dormer bungalow, and which we understand should have been built at a lower level by excavating the ground. The impact of additional roof height in this particular location, situated as it is between the only high, only high buildings on this stretch, will have a severe negative impact on the residential immunity of several neighbouring owners. Whilst from a strictly legal perspective there is no right to a view, it doesn't mean that the loss of a view is necessarily irrelevant to planning. Indeed, the original planning design guidelines for this area in the 1980s specifically required the development of bungalows to a reduce the impact of the development on the users of the rural way, b enable views to the west to be retained from within the site of the bungalow roofs, and c to avoid a sawtooth appearance. The visual value of the River D estuary is one of the most important factors in the residential amenity of this area of Colby, and one of the main reasons why residents choose to, choose to live here. Removing or res severely restricting that amenity for at least 11 neighbouring houses should be taken into account when considering this application. Furthermore, by granting permission now, it is highly likely that further development will take place along this stretch of the Wirral Way, reducing or removing the visual value <coughs> for both residents and those driving or walking in the area. 
Finally, we submit that the double height black hole based on the gardens of numbers three and four of Finney will be ugly, overbearing, and intrusive for both garden and house level, and hence an unneighbourly development. We refute the contention that the increased height of 2.2 metres is minimal in this situation. There is a huge difference between the open space from the house and garden when viewing a double height from the hall. Can I just interrupt to you for For these reasons, we submit that the council should not grant permission as the adverse impact of doing so will significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits and is unequal. Thank you. Would the applicant or agent like to speak? Uh, Councillor Jeffrey Mark Blaskirby and Thursday's award. Um, I should say um, this item was taken uh, out of delegation in addition to the petition by my work colleague Councillor Jeffrey, who unfortunately can't be here this evening. Um, I sent his apologies. Um, as you heard, there's a, there's a qualifying petition of 47 signatures. Um, you've also heard in great detail that the residents feel very strongly that this will have an adverse effect on, on their properties and also is well out of keeping with the intention of how this um, development was supposed to be built in the first place. Um, the Colby Society, um, as I say, in particular this property is substantial, three bedroom bundle occupied by generous cycle views that are looking the way. This part of the Needles Park received an outline plan commission in 1978. And then in 1982, the planning committee approved a set of guidelines that gave guidance for each individual plot. This plot was designated as a bungalow this proposal would effectively turn this property into a substantial two-story house with four bedrooms and a gym, increasing the floor area by 50%. As this bungalow sits on a large plot, it would be possible to extend it to a reasonable degree without reverting to the second story. This would not have a detrimental effect on the surroundings. If this application is granted, it would set a precedence to develop to other bungalows and would have a detrimental effect to the visual means to the other way. For these reasons, the Holy Society feels that this application should be refused. Um, there is also the consideration that by removing, as you've been told, bungalows from the small bungalows stop in Colby, that um, people of the village wouldn't be able to downsize within the area where they've all, always lived. Um, there are still residents <coughs> who uh, moved into any of this park when it was first being developed, and they're very well aware of the restrictions at the time of the houses at the inland side, but houses at the inland side, and it's definitely intended to be bungalows on the seaside. 
he would have put away inside. And uh, in fact, um, there is the supplementary planning guideline, SPG 7, design and density control guidelines for Eagles Park Colby, paragraph 2 3, on plots 35 to 38, which back up to the Royal Way, Greenbelt boundary to the south and southeast. Only gondolas will be allowed. And all other plots, only two story gondolas will be acceptable, which should be conventional design and sleeping pitch, which is not less than possibly broken by use of gables, dormers, vegetables, and other traditional elements. Um, the plan published at the time shows bundles all around the outside and houses all around the inside. Um, further, the land you've also been told that the reason that the door the bundle the next door is because of the problem space reverse with drains, so they were allowed to go to the tour instead of just being constrained by the bundle of the layout. Further to that, uh, the modern national planning policy under a heading Achieving Sustainable <coughs> Development, at paragraph 50 says, to deliver a wide choice of high quality homes and create sustainable, inclusive, and mixed communities, local planning authorities should plan for a mix of housing based on current and future demographic trends and the needs of different groups in the community, such as older people, people with disabilities. I think that said it all. Um, obviously, the uh, applicants having gone through the process of having pre-application consultations and uh, feel justified in putting an application of this sort. I think the, the residents are very justified in saying no, this is wrong, and I think they have the, the guidelines uh, to, to support their case, so I hope you will find good reasons to refuse this application. Thank you, Chairman members. Thank you. Was there any comments? Would you like to make any comments on the Yeah, I'm really having difficulty with this one because I fully, fully appreciate the concerns of the local residents. What does concern me is that this um, control guidance for Glen Eagles Park is 32 years old and I'm very concerned about the impact of that on any decision to, refusal, to, to refuse in the way that it would be reviewed by uh, an, an appeal inspector. I'm not saying we should bend over backwards to just deal with what they want out of this or what they might want out of this but I need to have some guidance from officers on how relevant this would be because it was obviously put in place for the clear, um, uh, uh, the clear intention of ensuring that the whole uh, character and structure of the Colby area was maintained at that time and we'd all like to see it maintained quite right, obviously but apart from that document itself and whether it is relevant or not I cannot really see any justifiable reason for refusal that could be sustained at appeal. What I'd also like to see before we make any further thoughts on this, or have any further thoughts on this, have we got some elevations and plans that we just show this particular building to see what it's going to look like and further what it looks like at the moment. I think before I say any more, I'd like those put on the screen, please. Thank you.
So th this is the bungalow as it, as it currently stands. This is the front elevation, um, and this is the, uh, the rear elevation. This is the property immediately uh, next door. So this is number uh, five, which as you can see is a, uh, is a dormer bungalow. Um, and again, this is the property is uh, next to it. Then here, this is the property immediately opposite. So you can see that in fact, there are two storey dwellings um, in the street scene. This is number two, uh, Simon's Bridge. And this, this one here is, is number three. Um, this property here is the house on the corner. That's number one. So again, it's a two storey property. And this is the property that's immediately adjacent. This is, I think, the property of the lady um, who spoke to us. It's, um, it's number four, um, Finney. Actually, no, the lady was number three. So this is number four, the Finney. Um, and this is the property here. This is number three. And so again, um, two-story dwelling. Uh, but this one here is a is a dormer dwelling. But you can see this is the edge of the application bungalow, uh, which will come up um, by 2.2 meters. And so the gable will be here. But the distance between um, the adjacent property and the uh, the applicant property is is still a significant distance. And then finally, the last set of photos. Um, again. This is number seven, the Finney, uh, seven Simon's Bridge, um, and this uh, raises in terms of the land level, um, so it sits above the, the application site. The application site is lower, but that is a single story property. Um, so it gives, it gives members a flavour for the, um, uh, the, the street scene uh, in terms of what's there at the moment. If I just show you the, um, the floor plans. As I said, um, the, the bulk of the accommodation is still all at ground floor level. Um, so kitchen, dining room, lounge, two bedrooms, um, and, and, and other accommodation all at ground floor. And then you have this new master bedroom on the first floor with ensuite facilities, and this is the, the small gym area. Um, so essentially, it does retain a significant proportion of, of bungalow elements, if you like. Thank you. I thought that was very helpful. I think my concern is that uh, we're using this 32-year-old document as a sort of reason, if you like, for turning it down. And yet there are other examples where it has been breached, if you want to use that word, by loads of other development that have crept in under the wires two-story development. So quite frankly, I think if we were to refuse this on those grounds, we'd be on a hiding for nothing because the appeal court, the, the appeal inspectors would turn around and say, well, what are you complaining about? There's adjacent properties close by which are breaching that very guideline that you're allegedly putting forward as a reason for refusal. Having looked at the photographs of the site, I know the site obviously because I'm a ward counsel for that area, but I wanted others to see it. I don't think there is anything particularly characteristic about that site. They're lovely bungalows, don't get me wrong, they're beautiful, which I can afford to anyone, which I can't. But having said that, I don't think there's any major character issues relating to that development that would be adversely affected by this particular development being approved in accordance with the officer's recommendation. So being unhappy as I am that it's going against the guidance that was originally put forward 32 years ago, I do not see how we can use that guidance, rebuilding, uh, um, being aware of what's happened since, how we can use that to give us any comfort at appeal. So I think, under the circumstances, I don't feel there are any reasons, sustainable or otherwise, for moving refusal for what looks like a reasonable development that is not clashing with any of the other buildings.